Joan Heller and Nancy Gerton, both from the auditor's office, will be doing our interviews this evening. Okay, Nancy and I are here with Sergeant Cartwright. Now, Sergeant Cartwright is the one who trained Hero, correct? Yes. And we are at the Buckeye? Buckeye Canine Academy. What are those things, those boxes? They call them blinds. And what's the purpose of those? Uh, the purpose of those is to simulate uh, an area where a person might hide, such as behind a tree or behind a, a big bush or something of that nature. He has to bark at the subject and not engage him or bite him until the suspect makes a threatening gesture. Okay. The state of Ohio is a minimum standard of proficiency you have to pass before you're allowed to put the dog out on patrol. Typically though, it's about 400 hours of training to get the dog to where you need them to be to, to pass the state of Ohio standard. Do you do like an intelligence test before you start them or anything? Oh, at, yes, somebody. they're all, all the dogs are screened. They have to, they have, to have the, uh, the aptitude to be able to go on to the training. Now, you had He's, what he's, is he three? Did you say he's Hero? three? Yeah. Yes, yeah. he's about three. Okay, and you had him for a year. Where was he prior to you having him for that? Uh, was he two years? Slovenia. Oh, now did they, did they start with training them there? Well, the Eastern Bloc countries are right now are picking up a lot of uh, the police dogs because it's fairly, they have a lot, they have a lot of stock over there. Plus, they don't charge as much. So that's how we get them over here at a reduced rate. Um, most of your uh, Western Bloc countries, uh, since the uh, mark is making a big comeback in person, the U.S. dollar, uh, they're getting very, very high as far as cost. Okay. I have a question. I have a friend who has a, he's, he privately owns a dog that was trained in Germany mm -hmm. um, as a guard dog for their property, and that dog patrols all the time. That dog, don't laugh at me, but that dog only speaks German. Mm -hmm. So, do these dogs come to you speaking English or speaking well, we'd like Slovenian? Well, we'd like to think of it as, as German. It's more like butchered German. Uh, <laughs> we don't have the true sense of the uh, pronunciation of the word. But uh, essentially, we use German. I didn't use Slo uh, uh, Slovenian because of the fact that it would have been a, a third language. Um, okay. And I didn't, especially under when you're under uh, tense circumstances, you tend to revert back to what you know best. So essentially, he was more, he was intelligent enough that I could just, I just switched him over to, you know, German commands, and within several times, he picked up on it. What's the difference between these dogs and an explosives dog? Essentially, just a different odor that they're looking for. They still utilize the same pattern when they're searching, but uh, instead of uh, being an aggressive dog, which is a dog that would necessarily uh, scratch at the odor, at the source of the odor, or, or chew, chew at it. The bomb dog, the bomb dog sits at the odor. Yeah. So that's a big difference. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. Have you ever had to use him in the county here? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, he's got about, uh, in the county, he's probably got probably eight to 10 deployments. Well, that's really cool. It's neat to know we have that. Now, I understand you hid some drugs and we're gonna go see if Hero can find him. Yes, and uh, Hero's, Hero's going to be, he's also a passive alert dog. Um, What's that? A dog that sits at the source of the odor. Oh. So he uh, basically, I trained him the same way as I did my bomb dog. That way, the training's all the same. Okay. All right. Well, give us a minute. We're going to change our location here, and we're going to go see if Hero can find all those drugs for us. We're going to watch as Deputy King works uh, Hero, and Sergeant Cartwright's going to give us a little bit of voice over here and tell you what he's doing. Okay. What he's doing is he's, he's presenting what we call presenting the odors. He's taking the dog around and putting the dog in a position where he can find the. Uh, the odor of marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamines, or heroin. Anytime we do this type of exercise, though, we, we keep them on a leash um, because that way you can present the, you can present the, each odor or each location that you want sniffed. Okay, you can see there that the dog hesitated. He did this little head bob while he's looking at Dave, and that's, an, that's what we call as a, a show me command. Um, it's a verification that he made an alert. What he's going to sniff now is what we call scratch boxes. Um, we use those for the aggressive alert dogs. And you can see there that as he was going over it, he just about fell over himself. And that was obviously an indication. Has he been right on all of them so far? Yes, he has. You have to put the dog's nose within 12 to 14 inches of the, of the odor itself in order for him to alert unless it's a real sizable amount. And you can see that there's cats up on the crate up there. And actually, 
that's, that's it's a distraction we we train the dogs to work around. Okay, so you can see there that that was another that was another alert. There's a there's a, ba a baggie of cocaine behind the pillar there. So he found all the stuff that was hidden. Yes, there were four finds. He found all four of them, and they consisted of cocaine, meth, uh, heroin, and uh, marijuana. Okay, thank you very much.